Hi everybody and welcome to the very first episode of I Want to Know. That's right, last week I told you that we're starting a brand new YouTube show answering your questions. That's right, the things that keep you up at night. The things that make you look at the ceiling and wonder, oh, where's the night gone? Those things that probe your mind and make your head feel like it's going to explode. And some of you just have questions that you want answered. And whatever question you have that you want answered, it's very simple to do. All you have to do is either leave a message here on the uh, video on YouTube, or you can leave a message on Facebook when I post the YouTube video, or you can send me a private message on Facebook, or you can send me a private message on YouTube, or you can tweet me at Enosh Music on Twitter and ask me the question. All you got to do is make sure that I know that it's for the show um, and not just a random question that you're asking me and I will be happy to get to it as soon as I can with that being said let's answer our first question and the first question is do you really think having no rules with a friend like me is a smart idea hmm given that I have some unique friends you may be right but I think in the end it's okay I mean I really don't care you know, you can ask me anything. I really have no secrets to hide. Pretty much. Question the second. Why does the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame overlook great bands and end up putting in rap stars and rhythm and blues stars? You do know where rock and roll got its start, right? All right, now look. I, I know that there are going to be some people out there who disagree with me, and uh, look, I never said that this show was going to be agreeable to everyone, that you were all going to agree with my answers, but here's my answer and here's the short of it. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution. Rock and roll's just rock and roll. And when you look into where rock and roll came from, I mean, we didn't just wake up and have metal. We didn't just wake up and have 80s rock bands or 70s rock bands, classic rock bands. I mean, how far back do you go when it comes to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I mean, do you just go back to the 60s? Uh, do you just go back to the 50s with Elvis? You know, I mean, where does it stop? When you look into it, the reality is, is that rock and roll, man, evolved out of jazz, out of many different styles of music, and uh, became rhythm and blues. And, you know, and then turned into what it is nowadays. I mean, a lot of what rock and roll started is we would call kind of country nowadays. I mean, it's kind of that, that uh, southern groove kind of, you know, uh, uh, rockabilly kind of deal. And, um, but that's rock and roll as well. So, I mean, the question is, is what kind of rock and roll do you like? It's not whether or not rap artists or, or R&B artists should be in the Hall of Fame. It's what kind of rock and roll do you like? Do you like 60s rock? Do you like Elvis? Uh, do you like the Beatles? Do you like Led Zeppelin? Do you like Kiss? Do you like, uh, you know, Def Leppard and Poison and Van Halen? Um, you know, or do, or do you like Nirvana and Soundgarden and those kind of things? Or do you like modern? I mean, there's not a... It's hard because there's not... Uh, rock and roll is going through a time right now when uh, rock and roll is not at the height of uh, the popularity of music right now. But that doesn't mean that it's gone away. Rock and roll will never go away. As long as, as, long as some kid can pick up a guitar and uh, get in his garage or in his basement or just in his room and, and jam out, it's gonna be okay. So the thing is, the question though, is whether or not uh, rap artists and R&B artists should be let into the Hall of Fame. Man, it's just all rock and roll, you know? And I mean, rap artists, they, um, there's so many rap artists that have contributed. You know, I mean, it's, it's a popular thing for people who are rock and roll purists to say, oh, rap isn't music, you know, it's all, you know, techno and and you know it's just beats and rap and you know the, the reality is man is there you have to be really talented to do rap well uh, it's not just as easy as just getting up and and saying some words now yeah back in the 80s I remember being a kid and then you know everybody who was going around said my name is Enosh V and I'm here to say you know that but that's not what rap is nowadays I mean people are doing stuff lyrically and uh, you know, just with the way that they pronounce things and, and, and get into these word patterns, it's just amazing. Um, you know, is it rock and roll? You know, I don't know, but it's got, it's a lot of it's got a rock 
kind of groove to it. A lot of it is taken from rock. Um, you know, a lot of early rap especially was uh, was influenced by rock and roll. I mean, you look at uh, uh, Tone Loke, you know, uh, took uh, Jamie's Crying from Van Halen and and, and made a song out of it. And then, you know, then you got, of course, the ultimate collaboration with Run DMC and Aerosmith doing uh, Walk This Way. And I mean, would I say that Run DMC should be in the Hall of Fame for that song? Absolutely, because it crossed those, uh, those two styles of music together and made something I think that was really, really awesome. And I enjoy it. And uh, I, I would tell you, hey, if you don't like rap, if you don't like R&B, don't listen to it. It's like anything, you know, um, and some people like certain forms of rock, but they don't like other forms of rock. So if you don't like it, don't listen to it. It doesn't mean that it can't be in the Hall of Fame, though. And I guess that's what I would say. Let it all in. I don't care. All right. And f the final question for this week's episode. There goes a spider. And the final question for today's episode is how far is a galaxy far, far away in miles? Now you may be thinking, you know, there's, there's no way we can know. It's just far, far away, right? And you might have asked me this question just being a smart aleck because you know I'm a Star Wars fan. Oh, but fasten your seatbelts. All right, to answer this, let's go back to 1999 when Star Wars The Phantom Menace came out. Uh, the thing was, was the movie came out, uh, it was kind of a disappointment to a lot of people who had uh, been hoping for a great Star Wars movie, had been looking forward to episode one and the, the first Star Wars story since, you know, 1983 when we saw Return of the Jedi. One of the things, though, that this movie did bring us that we probably weren't expecting, and that was E.T. As you can see here, E.T., well, his species, made an appearance in Episode 1 in the Senate Chamber. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is use what we know about space travel. I mean, like I said, in Star Wars, they go, they travel at the speed of light. So we know, though, that it would take literally thousands of years traveling at the speed of light uh, to get here from another galaxy. So even if they were in, like on the other side of our galaxy, it would still take a lot of years. I mean, thousands and thousands of years to get here. And I'm you have to assume that ET's species does not live to be thousands and thousands of years old. I mean, they came here basically collecting plant life. So, um I'm I'm guessing that they didn't just like swing by Earth and take 30,000 years to get here. So, really the question we need to ask ourselves first is how close is the closest galaxy? In addition to our own Milky Way galaxy being a part of a local group, a collection of 54 galaxies and dwarf galaxies, we're also part of a larger formation known as the Virgo Supercluster. So you could say, we've got a lot of neighbors. Most people consider the Andromeda Galaxy to be our closest galactic cohabitant. But in reality, Andromeda is the closest spiral galaxy and not really the closest galaxy by a long shot. That distinction actually falls to a formation within the Milky Way itself, a dwarf galaxy, one that goes by the name of the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, AKA the Canis Major Over Density. Because E.T. was in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, and because Star Wars documents everything eventually, we know from various media and books that E.T.'s home world was given a name and their species was named as well. So E.T. was from a planet called Brodo Asoji, and he was an Asogian. We're also told that the planet Brodo Asoji was located in the Purin sector of the Outer Rim territories of the galaxy in Star Wars. And at some point, they joined the Galactic Republic, which is why they had senators in Episode One. There's a very interesting story that could be found in Holonet News, Volume 53150. Okay, so in this, we're told about a Senator Greeblips who actually helped fund an expedition to another galaxy from Brodo Asoji. Could this be E.T.? I mean, it sounds like another reference to E.T. the movie. And when you add in the fact that, well, E.T. was in the Star Wars universe, so he's from another galaxy, 
This would seem to make sense. Along with the fact that when you watch the movie E.T., you see that during Halloween, he's out trick-or-treating with Elliot and uh, his brother and sister Gertie, and he sees somebody dressed up like Yoda, to which he immediately starts saying, home, 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 recognizing probably Yoda's species from his own galaxy. Interesting stuff. So I know what you're saying. That still doesn't tell us exactly how far away in miles that galaxy is. But it can help us a little bit because it brings us back to, well, the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. That formation is only 42,000 light years from the galactic center and a mere 25,000 light years from our own solar system. That puts it closer to us than the center of our own galaxy, which is 30,000 light years away from our solar system. All right, so let's bring this one home. Here's what we know. We know that light speed travel is possible in the Star Wars universe. We also know that E.T. came from a planet called Brodo Asoji in the Star Wars galaxy because it was represented in the Galactic Senate by Senator Greeblips. We know that Senator Greeblips at one point commissioned a flight of Asogians to leave the Star Wars galaxy and explore another galaxy. So in theory, and mind you, again, this is theory, disregard what I said about probability. But if they left 30,000 years ago, they could have gotten to Earth, assuming that they're from the, the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy coming to the Milky Way Galaxy. So that tells us that E.T. is both a part of our world and the Star Wars world. And Star Wars opens with a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Like I said, it would take them 30,000 years and generations upon generations of Asogians, but if they planned on never coming back and just exploring another galaxy, theoretically, it's very possible. So then all we have to do to figure out how far away that galaxy is, is find out how far in miles Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy is from us. And that number? is 5,878,499,810,000 miles away. So, you can plan your trip, but I would plan it soon, because it's gonna take you quite a while to get there. Well, thanks for joining me, and I hope that you send me in your questions, whatever they are, it doesn't matter. It can be anything, funny, silly, serious, whatever. All you got to do is leave a message here on YouTube, or you can leave me a message on Facebook, or of course, tweet me at Enosh Music. Whatever you do, please send me a question. Like this video, uh, subscribe for more, and give me a thumbs up, okay? And I will see you next time and answer your questions on I Want to Know.